frame. All right, I'm getting the green light, so we're going to kick this off. So, um, you were at Exploiting Browsers Like a Boss with White Lightning, so if not, now it's time to bail. <laughs> I like uh, energy drinks and Chewbacca, so that's pretty much all the background you're going to get. All right, so how many of you, if I raise a hand, have ever kicked off a spear phishing email to somebody? Or a phishing email? Yeah, a lot of you. OK, so we're just going to do like a little experiment as part of the talk. We're going to kick off an email at the beginning. Then we're going to check it at the end of the talk to see who clicked on it. Right? It's not going to exploit or do anything so malicious. Right? We're just going to track metrics. So here we go. Recover monitor. All right. How many of you have heard of Black Squirrel? BlackSquirrel.io? We got one, two, couple. Yeah, OK, sweet. All right, so I like Black Squirrel for doing spear phishing operations. It's pretty awesome. So I'm just going to use that. But you could use another tool like Phishing Frenzy is pretty awesome, and it's totally free. This is like a managed service online, so, um, which is actually free right now. So you can go check it out and sign up right now. We're in the beta, right? So do it while it's free, right? So uh, OK, so you just go over here, and you click Send, right? And then we're just going to go over here, and we're going to click off. They actually like pre saves previous spear phishing emails that I sent out. So I'm just going to load up the last one that I tested. And then uh, this is what it says. It says, Bryce is speaking at DerbyCon. Check out the live feed here. There's no live feed, so don't try and find it, right? So it's just going to take them to the schedule page. So, and then track the metrics. Um, sending out to a group of cybersecurity experts. They're all in master's program. It's a DL that they use that I'm a part of. So none of them should click on this at all. It's coming from no reply at Black Squirrel. So it's not a valid, like, normal email I would email from. And uh, yeah, so we'll see if anybody clicks it. So um, I'm just going to pull the, and I apologize for the, the scrolling of the monitors. I know I'm not a, uh, OK. We can still see it? Sweet. So I'm just chucking the DL in here. And then we're going to kick it off down here. And that's it. So it's kicked off. So we'll check it at the end to see if anyone clicked the links. And we'll show you the data that comes back. All right. So now I'm going back to PowerPoint. Because, right, you can't have a presentation without PowerPoint slides. All right. So why Lightning? Where did it come from? What's the origin? Why did I spend any time doing this and lose sleep over it and things like that? So, so it really, it's really simple. It comes down to this. My brother, literally my brother right there, it was Christmas a couple years ago. He's like, you're the super hacksaw guy. He's like, can you hack my laptop? I like glance over at his screen. I see he's running some freaking out of date version of Java. And I'm like, yeah, I got this. Feeling super smug and confident. He's like, I'm getting up on his box and the ownage is happening. So redirect on the network, because we're on the same LAN, right? Iframe into its HTTP traffic. Redirect to browser out opponent inside of Metasploit. Browser out opponent, because this is a couple years ago, decides it's a good idea to throw Internet Explorer exploits at his browser, even though he's running a freaking MacBook Pro. So that was just kind of epic fail. I was not, I was not happy, right? Sad faces at the bottom. So then talking with my hacker friends, right, they're like, just use beef, right? And I love freaking beef. Like the bomb, when you're doing a pen testing engagement and you find a cross-site scripting vulnerability and you actually want to show the client, this is why you need to patch this out, especially when it's like a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability. You're like, just freaking throw in a beef tag, start hooking users. They'll get the point real quick why you, they need to patch it, right? So, but I, I'm not a patient guy, right? I like instant grat, instant gratification. I don't want to wait for my brother to browse the internet, to come home. I want to just go do my own thing. It's Christmas break. I wanted to auto run. I wanted to like survey the browser and find the best exploit. I just wanted to throw the best exploit. I don't want you to throw 100 exploits at the target. I just need one exploit to get on your box, right? So I, that's why I didn't really use this. If you, if you want to slid in front of beef and, 
and do it manually, that's cool. Or if you know what exploit you want to throw, you can just enable that module. It's a real quick edit inside the Ruby files. Um, but yeah, kind of scripting it to do the survey was painful. I wrote a script to do that. If anyone's interested, I can put it on GitHub. But I, I found my solution to be better. So. Um, so then I just realized this is super lame. Crimeware kits can already do this, right? They're fully automated. I mean, yeah, they deploy like usually like some binary to disk, which is no good. But you know, they usually only use port 80, and they'll they'll take care of it on autom fully automated. So why why isn't there an open source tool that does the same thing? And then you know, like some trust issues with using Crimeware kits, right? You know, they kind of obfuscate or encode their code. So you have to like deobfuscate it if you actually want to see what they're doing a lot of times. And sometimes it's just for performance reasons, right? Say it's written in PHP, they'll do some things to make it render faster and things like that. So, but I don't really want to trust their code, right? I, I would like an open source solution. And then like you could always build your own social engineering modules or other attacks. That takes, that takes time, right? And I just want to party, so. So then I'm like, okay, I'll just use Metasploit, right? We'll just throw down a single exploit. Then I was like, well, I know he's out of date Java, but I'm not really sure what version it is. There's a couple exploits in here. I could just pick one and try it a few times. I'll probably get up on his box, but this just seems sloppy, and I don't really like sloppy C and E, right? So next solution. All right, so let's just go back to browser auto pwn, right? So browser auto pwn would work fine for poning my brother. We're in the same land. It's just Totally fine, right? It's going to throw way more exploits than we need to throw. It throws the unapplicable exploits. But what I'm speaking of specifically is they redesigned it lately, and I think it happened like late 2013 based off the modules that support it, with this browser requirements options. So if you actually go on the exploit modules and you see it has a browser requirement options, it'll survey against that information, only throw it if it's applicable. So now it won't throw against unapplicable OSs and things like that. So it's pretty nice, but Still, it's going to throw a bunch of exploits. And here, here's the key crutch that kind of kills me on using it in like a pen testing real life engagement, right? This is the model of how it works by default. I mean, you can edit the, you can edit the Ruby module. I mean, it's open source, right? But you're still going to need multiple egress ports to get your rat, comms to your rat, the, the rat being an interpreter in this case, right? And it's going to be straight reverse TCP connections. So they're going to connect to your web server. You're going to send back all the exploits. Right? And then, depending on which exploit is successful, it's going to call back to you either on these random ports, 3333, 666, 777. You added the code, you can change the ports, but still you're going to have to have three open egress ports. So if they are doing egress filtering, you're going to be a sad panda, right? So you're not going to get your shell even though your exploit worked. That's super lame, right? So that leads me to rule number something of, for Bryce exploitation, right? So Here's like a kind of philosophy thing. Whenever possible, you can re if you can reuse the same protocols, ports, application layer protocols, the same come through the same path that you're throwing the exploit to between your exploit and your comms, right? Then your success rate should be very high, right? If it works for the exploit, it should work for your rat. So, so that's kind of like one of the guiding principles of white lightning. So. So, but like, what is, what is white lightning, right? Is it what you find when you go to Urban Dictionary? I, not for the weak of heart, right? So, <laughs> is it a Burt Reynolds movie? Yeah, yeah, it totally is, it's awesome. Is it Moonshine? Yeah, yeah, it is, so. But it's also now a platform for browser exploitation. Da da da, there you go. So, now we can exploit people using white lightning. All right, and then like, why, why even release another tool? I got plenty of freaking tools. I don't need more tools. Well, like, how many of you are acquainted with the, by raise of hands, concept of HD and Moore's Law? Darn, yeah, not enough. Okay, all right. So this is what we got to do, right? As you increase your defensive posture of your organization, the success rate of your attackers based off the skill level of your attackers is gonna drop off, right? So like, you got auditors. Auditors are just gonna come in and do like the basic stuff. Like, I'm gonna run vulnerability scan. I'm gonna see, are you doing, do you, do you have AV installed or something like that, right? In my opinion, auditors don't even hit what tools are already available in the market, right? If you just use Metasploit straight up, you can 
beat what the auditor's doing, right? So then you add more security controls, right? And then the script titties start to drop off. But then the people who are like white hacks or cyber criminals, or then you get like, you know, most sophisticated, right? You know, people doing espionage, they're just blowing you out of the water there, right? So what we do when we release public tools is we're really raising this bar of what's available to all the pen testers. We're releasing the bar of, you know, what, what you guys can do when you go out on your pen testing engagement. So, you know, you gotta push it, push the public tool, and push it real good, right? So, <laughs> if you don't know about HD more, search for it. Whoever wrote that blog, awesome job. So, all right, so I really hope you know this if you're here at DerbyCon, but server side exploit, there's like old school exploiting. You just throw the exploit at the server, hopefully the server processes it, takes advantage of the vulnerability, and you get freaking instant grad on the box. You're happy, right? Well, what, 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 so what's the guy to do? Firewall all the things, right? I just throw up a firewall. You can't, you can't throw exploits at me at the ports and I open, right? Well, yeah, you know, unfortunately our security stacks actually end up looking a lot like this. We just layer security products, right? We're like, throw IPS on there, throw DLP on there, throw full pack capture on there, all right? So, and real attackers, they realize this and they are just gonna go around it, right? So you can go send emails through our firewalls, go through the traffic we're already normally using. Once they're inside, they're gonna pivot and get to what they wanna go to, right? Yeah, lather, rinse, repeat, so. So this is like client-side exploitation. You send emails in or some way, you wait for user interaction or some type of web traffic, then you get on the, ad, you get on the user's box, the admin's box, then you just use these creds to pivot around the network. If it's SSH, you use SSH creds, if it's SMB, you know, you can go to the Kerberos talks, the tokens, all that stuff, so. So, why another tool, once again, right? So white lightning, it's future-proofed. It, as you see, it integrates with Metasploit. So I was trying not to reinvent the wheel, but at the same time, I was trying to make things better. Um, it's extensible, it's a code is free, you can pull it, do whatever you want with it, I don't care. And then, um, Designed only to use port 80 using valid HTTP requests. So it should go through your firewalls, um, web application proxies, things like that. It's easily modified to do HTTPS if that's what you want to do. Um, selects, it does a survey, selects the best exploits, and you can like say, hey, don't throw any exploits, or you only throw one exploit, or throw 100 exploits, if, but it only will throw them if they're applicable, right? So, and this is kind of the process, and now I'm gonna be honest, like I'm not a UAI, like UX designer for web, right? So I try to do a good job with the web interface, but uh, it's kind of like the last thing, right? The real value here is all the backend stuff. So um, you go in the management interface, you create a task key. The task key creates a, basically this unique URL. The unique URL, you give that to the user. You inject it into the traffic, or you send a spear finishing email, or you do something like that. When they click on it, you get a hit in the GUI. If the hit, positively identifies through its survey capabilities that they're exploitable or something, it's gonna go ahead and wind up that exploit in Metasploit and then throw the exploit back at the user. And if the exploit's successful, it's gonna load via PowerShell script, whatever you specify, and then, you know, if you say install software, it's install software, right? So some of these terms are taken from the criminal crime kits, like load is the term they would use, right? And I tried to use it because I felt like it was less confusing than using the word payload a couple times at a couple of different places, so. All right, so let's just look over the web interface, right, for a minute. All right, this is White Lightning. This is the Ninja. There's been some disputes over the logo design, but I mean, I think this is the best. <laughs> That's really what matters, right? So, all right, you log in to the tool. It's a, it, I mean, it gives you some basic information, like who's been hitting your, your unique URLs what your hits are, your throws, and your loads. Um, so we're just gonna create taskings. So we go to taskings. You can see what taskings are already available when you created them. And basically, this, this right here is the short URL you, you'd give your user. I apologize that it's not like super user intuitive. I'll try and make it more in the future, but it's functional, right? So let's say we wanna make a new tasking, cool. Okay, you scroll down, wow. Okay, you give it a name, that's arbitrary. We really don't care. Do you want to throw exploits, yes or no? If you want to throw exploits, you need to specify the exploit count. I, I recommend one. You really only need the one to get on the box, right? Um, remember, it's going to survey. It's going to pick the best exploit 
and then it's going to just use that one. So, um, and it knows it's vulnerable before it throws. So then it's going to invoke whatever PowerShell you put in this box. I'm just going to, for the first demo, do calc. But in the second demo, we'll show you how we can take this to the next level. And then, um, and then the one capability I did add in at this point is the ability to do 100% by 100% iframe to another website. Now, this is going to fail if the website has the X frame options HTTP header enabled with the right specification. But ironically, a lot of websites don't, including derbycon.org. What, who would have thought, right? So we're going to actually redirect people to DerbyCon. Or in the demo, right? Hey, no one who's DerbyCon fix that before my demo's over. OK, cool. And then blackhat.com, totally no X-frame options either, right? So, but if you do like Amazon.com, they have the X-frame options properly set. So 100% by 100% by iframe would not work. If you want to use this in conjunction with another tool, you, then you'd probably want to turn off the 100% by 100% iframe. So you would just say no to this checkbox. And when you click add, it generates everything here and it adds another record. So, okay, now let's go back and talk a little bit more and then I'll show you guys some exploitation. Okay, this is like, wait, you guys can see too much. Hang on. <laughs> okay, this is like what I want. I want exploitation, all port 80, HTTP valid. I want comms, HTTP valid, port 80. And preferably, I want it all coming back to the same box because I don't want to have to log into multiple shell sessions. That's a pain. So how do, how do you do this, right? I was like, dude, this seems like a simple problem. There's got to be a way to do this. It's already out there. Why haven't we not been doing this for years? So I was talking to my friend, Extreme. He's the, he's the other one there in the picture. And like thinking about how do, how do I want to integrate all these tools? I only want to use Port 80. I want to use Sandbox. And then, uh, and then he said something kind of irrelevant and then kind of hit me. So I, I credit him from this idea right here. So simple. So simple solution, right? We deploy an Apache reverse proxy on the box. The Apache reverse proxy routes the traffic to different ports on the back end based off the domain you're coming to. So let's say you go into example.com on port 80. It's going to come on in. Apache reverse proxy is going to forward it off to white lightning. But then let's say you're coming to so a subdomain.example.com, right? Like blog.example.com. The Apache reverse proxy is going to see that and forward it off to Metasploit on some random high port. Now, all the comms between you and the target are going to go over port 80 using valid HTTP comms. But on the back end, you can forward this off to any arbitrary ports you want, to any additional tools you want, all of that. But you can avoid egress filters this way. Now, you're going to have multiple entries, but it, they'll be usually in the same domain, right? A subdomain of a domain. So that's the solution that I came up with. So. Um, and then, really, there's two components to White Lightning. There's a front end. It's JavaScript. It does a survey, then forwards that data off to the back end. The back end does the logic, spins up the Metasploit modules, and then returns back what exploits should be thrown to the front end. The front end returns it back to the user. That's all seamless. It's using uh, XML HTTP requests. Uh, like, yeah, so to do that. So, and um, sweet. So this is like the complex slides of how it works. I'm going to just check your time. OK. So yeah, it logs stuff to the database, spins up Metasploit. But that's pretty much what I said. And then come back on the subdomain. You're going to hit up Metasploit and get the exploit back. And then you'll come back for the payload, which is the PowerShell payload that gets executed. And then that'll get logged out to the database, too. So we're tracking it through each stage. So, so that's kind of that complex. And then it supports exploits that are already in Metasploit. I just did a few dozen, right? But if there's something specific you want, most of the hits that I've got on it, the, the first top, the top two exploits here are the top hitters, right? The ones that get you in the boxes the most. So from my experience, your experience may be different. And so you spend spear phishing emails, redirect them to the white lining server, white lining throws the exploits, you get on the box. All right, so let's see it. Let's see it in action, right? All 
Okay, while well, it's restoring, I'm just gonna go here. I'll show you there's not really any tricks to this, right? So we just take the short URL here. I'm copying it and we're going over here. This is a Windows 7 box. It was fully updated like three days ago, um, except for it's running an outdated version of Microsoft Silverlight plugin. So that's the exploit it's probably gonna, that's it's gonna throw, right? Um, we're running the Process Explorer system internals tool in the background. If you see, this is our Internet Explorer proc right here. I'm so sorry that it's so small. Um, so I don't even know if you can see it still, but the Internet Explorer proc's running there. So, okay, cool. So now we're just gonna make sure that the VM can get to the internet. So I'm just gonna go arbitrary website. There's this has nothing to do with the actual demo. Okay, cool. I just went to fire.com. So I'll close it and open like a new thing, All right? Okay, so user clicks on the short URL, right? It's in the browser. I'm, I know you guys probably can't see it. You go to it, right? It's loading Black Hat's website. And the PowerShell executed calc on the box, right? So it does frequently crash the browser. So you'll see Black Hat website for a minute and then crashes it. And then Microsoft's very convenient. It says, did you know your Silverlight's out of date? You should really update your Silverlight. Thanks for that. Could have used that like five minutes ago, Microsoft. That was not very helpful, right? We're already up on the box. So um, if they're not exploitable at all, it's, it's, it's pretty seamless, right? It's, the browsing works perfect in the websites. They can click on all the links. The only thing is the URL is not going to change as they click around the website. Um, and if you use those options properly, you can set the title and the icon to match what is actually on the website. So I, I feel like that's pretty good. So. Don't say okay, I'm just restoring the VM while I do a couple more slides. While we do a couple more slides. Come on this journey. Okay, so now we got calc on the box. That's cool, but not like... 100% super useful, right? So, so um, if you guys are interested, Brady Bloxham wrote this tool, Throwback. He's speaking at 10 a.m. on Sunday, so come check it out. He gave it the same talk at DEF CON. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I pulled the PowerShell out of PowerSploit that does reflective DLL injection. So what we're gonna do is that it's gonna reach back to the server, grab the PowerShell script. The PowerShell script is gonna have the DLL and it's gonna reflectively inject it into memory. Um, and then we should get a callback in the throwback LP and we'll be able to command and control the box. Nothing should have hit disk at any point. So, so let's run through the demo. Okay, this is what throwback looks like. You'll learn more about our Brady's talk if you show up. It says there's no targets, so we need to do some work, right? So let's get some targets. So we're going back here. We're gonna take the second URL, short URL. All right, did we, sweet, I hope we, okay. All right, good. All right, everything's running, everything. I apologize that the demo is probably super small, but. Once again, I'm just gonna check to make sure we get on the internet by going to fire.com. And then, uh, okay, sweet. And then um, I'm gonna show you running system internals again, and we're running Internet Explorer down here. And last thing, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys might be able to see it, I hope. Sorry, it's blurry, okay, well. Um, okay, now we're gonna go to this one. So, we paste this in, we go to the short URL. This is taking us off to the 100 by 100% iframe of DerbyCon. Um, it's figuring out that we have an out-of-date version of Flash. Uh, it's spinning it up in Metasploit, and usually when you see it go away, that's when the exploit was successful. So, one way you can tell that the exploit's been successful, we're using this browser exploitation kit, is you'll actually see that PowerShell.exe is currently running under the proc, um, and I'll do a zoom in on this as well, so you guys can see that. So that's a, that's how I'm like executing the payload. So um, so you can kind of do some customization. So um, 
So now if we go back to the throwback LP, hopefully we'll have a callback there. Sweet, okay, so we got throwback installed on the box, right? So now we can pretty much do anything we want to on the box. You go to the box, you can say, hey, give me a process list. You can execute the command. It's gonna query up and when it, next time it calls back, it's gonna pick up the command and then get the results back to the server. So it'll take a minute, so we'll, we'll show that. But um, you can actually see over here and we'll see if it pops. Um, like PowerShell will kick off a, like a, task list DXE eventually. So, um, cool. So we'll come back to throwback in a minute when the task is completed. Okay, that's the demo of that. We'll check that out, but let's give it a couple more minutes, All right? Sorry, I'm a little nervous, so I'm flying through this talk. So uh, um, while we're waiting for that throwback, uh, while we're waiting for the callback, right? Does uh, anybody have questions about anything you've seen so far? Yep, back there. Yeah, that's a good question for not trashing the page. Um, I don't have a solution. So if you have a solution, please let me know. So, so I. I I just assume it's part of the exploitation process that the browser is going to crash as part of it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, because we got code execution in the box, so we could kick open and it's the same thing that they just had, right? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, problem solved. We're just gonna put that on the Trillo list of things to do, right? So, um, okay, sweet. So I'm coming back around. Hopefully, you can see the product. It kicked off the task list because it's running in memory, and you can see here, here's the proxies on the box. If you wanna know more about Throwback, that's a total open source tool. You can just go to Brady's GitHub and pull it down. Um, yeah, so, and then if you want white lightning, that's that's public as of now. Um, at the end, the very, very end, we'll, we'll check the emails. Um, I created literally 50 slides and blew through them in like 10 minutes, so that's what I feel like. So it's up here, it's under Tweak Fox. it's on GitHub, so if you want the code, um, feel free to pull it. And then uh, if you want to know more about this tool or throwback or some other custom stuff that I've built and Brady has built. We're doing a uh, training at Black Hat, Black Hat Europe, so next month. So come out to Amsterdam, have a good time. And then uh, community project, it's totally open source. Um, I have tons of ideas on how to make it better. Um, so I'm gonna be rolling those in, but um, you know, if anybody wanted to get involved in the process project, that'd be awesome, right? Uh, okay. So let's go and see if anybody clicked on the links. I can't guarantee anybody did, right? That was a live demo, but uh, we're gonna do it anyways, so. Okay, so I'm coming back to here. We're going back to the DerbyCon. Okay, so we haven't had anybody click on the link yet, as far as I can tell. Um, but if you look in here, you can see what data you would get, right? So. Um, you get generally what OS the person's using and some other remote data, right? And this is the, the black squirrel tool, not out of the white lightning tool. You get the, some of the same data out of white lightning, so. Um, okay, that's pretty much it for my talk, so any more questions? Tweak Fox, so I'm come, I'll come back to him, throw it up on the screen while we're talking. Um, But yeah, feel free to pull the code. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, just tweak Fox, right? On Twitter. Um, so that's, that's, that's uh, yeah. And if you want more information, right, you know, hit me up, direct message me on Twitter, and I'm happy to help you get it set up or explain more documentation or anything you need, right? So um, more questions? Anybody? Oh, lots of questions.
Oh, great question. So his question is, is there exploits available for Mac? So that's not rolled into the tool. Um, so I definitely want to do that because like all, all like security pe peeps run like OS X now, right? So that'd be really cool. It wasn't the priority because I was trying to make the tool pen testing focused so that you could actually be used in engagements. And so it, the tool, just to answer your questions, is primarily focused and tested around Windows 7, 32, and 64-bit endpoints, right? With some limited testing on Windows 8.1, 64-bit endpoints. So that's what I'm targeting this for. I figure those are the people most likely to browse the internet. Those are the people you're probably having problems getting on their boxes to begin with. I mean, and just think, this is a tool that you could use in more scenarios than just initial access, right? If you already have access to the internal network, but then there's a workstation and the workstation is completely firewalled off, but you're in the same lag segment as that workstation, if you can somehow redirect their traffic, inject the iframe yourself into their traffic, you can land down on the box just like I did with my brother's box. So, so you can, you know, you got to be thinking about those things, right? Just because, uh, more questions, yeah. Yeah, great question. It's have I tested this with a full blown host based idea IPS, right? So I have not tested it with IPS. Um, it's definitely on my to do list with the first one being McAfee's EPO solution, because that's the one I see most commonly deployed in large businesses. Um, and uh, if, if it does get detected for whatever reason, it, it may be the payloads because the payloads are the exploits are coming straight out of Metasploit, right? But if it is something in my framework, I will fix it so it doesn't get detected. So yes, yeah, in the back. How does it generate that? Uh, so it's kind of automated as part of the process. And it just picks a random five letters, right? And then tacks it onto the end of the domain. Um, you can set up your own domains. It's just you edit the comp files. And the how-to file explains how to do that. Um, but if you're like, I don't want to do a short, dom short URL domain. I want to do index.php or something like that. Uh, just go in and rename the file. It should work just fine, right? The, the front end file is not file name dependent, right? The back end file is file name dependent, but you can see the front end file specifies the back end file as a parameter at the top of it. So if you want to change that too, you could change that. But the user never sees the back end URL unless they're like running through like a burp proxy or something like that, right? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great question. So his question is, how am I detecting what exploit to throw and whatnot? OK, so how the criminal kits do this is they use the plugin detect library, if any of you are acquainted with that, right? So I'm leveraging that same thing using plugin detect, except for plugin detect has some gaps in it that I needed to have reliable exploitation. So I added in some additional checks of my own. Um, just from various sources across the internet. So for example, plugin detect doesn't detect what version of Office you're running. A lot of the raw payloads require a specific version of Office. I want to check for that before I throw that exploit, because otherwise it will break. So I wrote my own to detect what version of Office you're running on the box. Um, that's only applicable if you're running uh, Internet Explorer because of the technique. But um, if you know, we can implement more techniques as we go, right? And then um, there's one or two other checks that weren't in browser plugin uh, yeah, that I implemented. So. OK, uh, questions in the backs? Uh, so currently, I think I have about 15 exploits built into it, right? Um, just because I only built out the survey for the top 15 that I thought it would be on boxes, right? And then it'll throw them. But it's all what you specify when you create the tasking. So if you specify one exploit, it's only going to throw one. If you specify zero, it's not going to throw any exploits. It's only going to pick up the data and survey it. Um, but if you specify like 100, it's just going it's, to, it's a counter, right? So it's going to throw until it hits that counter. So, so 15 is probably the max now. But as we build it out more and support more OSs, then there's going to be more exploits. Um, but realistically, I don't know how many you want to throw at the same time. I recommend one. So. So, any other questions? Oh, thanks. I like, I like that Lobo. I like that Lobo. I uh, don't sleep. So you will see that when you read the source code. So. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, cool. Thanks for coming out. I hope you guys pull the code. If you guys want help, hit me up on Twitter. Um, if you have ideas, even if you don't have time to do it, just hit me up. I'll add them to I track it in Trello, and I'll just add it to the list and work through it as I continue to add features. So thanks for coming out. Appreciate it.